Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at this weird little Nintendo Famicom handheld. It has a real DIY look to it. It's all clear. I really dig that. So this was sent to me for purpose of review by Ploy Lab. And I'm here to give you the lowdown. So this is the Cool Baby X7 handheld. Comes with a 501 Famicom cartridge. Now this is not emulation. This is an actual console. It's a not a legit Famicom, it's a Famicom clone. So it can play original cartridges besides just this cartridge that it came with. And it can also play NES cartridges if you have the converter for it. Those converters are a little harder to find, a little more expensive than the other way around if you want Famicom to NES, but you can do it if you so choose. So I've been having my eye on this thing for a while. And this one I have here is the brand new version Cool Baby X7 where they changed some things with it. And from what I understand, they supposedly fixed issues that were on the original release of it. And with me looking at this thing for a while, I was really interested. I like the look of it. Anything that plays Nintendo games, I'm, I'm down to check it out. And man, this, this was kind of a letdown. I was so damn excited, to be honest with you. I was really excited. So you have some options here. This can be output to TV has a little AV cable that it comes with. It also has a headphone jack if you wanna to listen to the screechy audio, you know, discreetly. And then it has a USB port underneath, which I was confused by, but then I found out it's so you can use this as a portable battery. That may be the only thing that this is good for, to be honest with you. And then you also have this little port on the bottom where you can plug in a second player controller or plug in the little adapter that they have and use four controllers to play four player games, I suppose. Okay. So this thing also has a micro USB port for charging. I suppose that's one of the upgrades over the previous version. So that's kind of a convenient thing there. Now on this 501 cartridge, there's a ton of games. I mean, 500 games, right? Well, not exactly. This is pretty typical of these kind of multi carts where you'll get legit games. You'll get a bunch of hacked games. You'll get repeats, but they're minor variations of the same game. As an example, Adventure Island is on here, but then you'll have like Adventure Island 2, 3, 4, 5, 26, 69, freaking Sea Adventure, that kind of thing. All they are are the same exact game, just where you start at a different level. Like you'll start at the sea level or the cave level, that kind of ridiculous thing. So it just fluffs out the game list. They also remove like the copyrights from a bunch of games, the logos from a bunch of games. It's the typical mess that you find on these kind of cartridges. You'll have stuff like Contra, where there's like 12 different Contra games. Super Mario, where it doesn't make any sense, just random hacks that don't perform very well. You'll find some decent stuff on here, but with this being more towards like an Asian market, you're not gonna get a ton of the North American release titles that you would hope for. A good number of them will be there, but eh, you know, it kinda is what it is you're not really gonna get that kind of selection that you would hope for with this. It's gonna be a lot of fluff, a lot of fluff. Now, the one thing with this device that confused me at first, because it wouldn't power on, or at least I thought it wouldn't power on, is the original version of this, it had a bunch of buttons on the bottom. Those buttons were for adjusting the screen, turning the screen on and off, changing the aspect ratio, the brightness, contrast, all that good stuff, uh, and volume, right? So looking at this device, there was none of those buttons on here. Now you have like a special key that you have to press. You see the select and start that's ab above the select and start on the console. It's a double set of buttons. They are like hotkey buttons. And this came with instructions that were completely in Chinese. And I had to use, you know, Google Translate app on my phone to read it. Cause I couldn't figure this thing out. I was like sending emails to the company. Like, Hey, I think this thing's broke. You know what I'm saying? And they they wanted to take a look at it and they found out, oh yeah, this is a new version. We'll translate the instructions and put them up. But then I figured it out with the hotkeys turning the screen on and off. It was just off because you're supposed to turn the screen off when you have this powered on, you're plugging it into a TV. But this leads us to like a whole other problem with this device is I tried outputting it to a CRT and yeah, I would get like audio, but I wouldn't really get any visuals on the screen. So I was like, Maybe it's just something with my my little tiny crappy CRT, right? So I got out the RetroTINK uh, 2X Pro, plugged it into that, plugged it into my portable monitor that's been serving me very well. 
And the same thing, I'm not getting visuals, I'm getting audio. And I switched through the different sources on the Retro Tink to make sure I was where I needed to be. And I just get those bars on the screen when the Retro Tink doesn't have an input source. So yeah, that, that was kind of confusing. And then I, I started to realize, I think I, I know what the problem is, is this isn't carrying like an NTSC signal. This has got to be PAL because I started playing a bunch of games on this 501 cartridge and I started noticing they're freaking slow. And I've played this same exact cartridge before on original hardware and there was no issues with that. So the device has something going on where I think it's outputting at 50 Hertz. So these games are not playing properly or there's something, there's something with the signal. I'm no freaking rocket scientist. If I was, I'd be, you know, on the moon or something or Uranus, but no, I'm here reviewing products, so I really don't know what the problem with that is, but playing those games, they're definitely so slow. They sound wonky. Like, the sound is jacked up. Not just because it sounds slow on a lot of these games, it's that just their high pitch, certain tones just sound weird. It's, it's pretty crazy, man. So I think that's what the problem is, and I thought, maybe it's something with the cartridge. So that's why I tested my Final Fantasy cartridge, which, granted, it's an original cartridge with an original board. It just has like an add-on to it that applied the English translation of Final Fantasy 1 and 2 to that cartridge. So original cartridge, just slightly modified. And it plays just fine, but it's slow. So yeah, there's something wrong with this system. And I would have imagined, because I started looking into the previous version that they made, and I seen the same issues. There's not too much information out there on that device. Not too many people have reviewed it or, you know, really talked about it. But the few little spots and forums that I've found information, it, it was the same thing. Like these games are running in like 50 hertz or something or some oddball, you know, thing here. And that's the same thing with this one. I don't know if there's a button combination to change that, but looking at the... Instructions, I'm not finding anything. So it's a, it's a real disappointment with that. The screen is not the worst, but definitely not what I would hope for. It, it you know, it, it, it's using that composite output to the LCD screen and you're getting some distortions with the visuals. Some people may not mind that, but uh, you know, for me, it's like, I, I'd rather have something that outputs a little better than this, but it seems typical with even bigger name brands that make devices like this, that you get that shitty output on these LCD screens where it's like, man, you guys should be doing something a little more premium. And then you could justify the, the, the price that you're charging for these devices. But with this one, yeah, viewing angles, the screen kind of dims a bit, depending on how you, you hold it. It's typical of this kind of device or these kind of screens anyway. And even if you could hold it and have a good you know sight on that screen, it's just, with the visuals, the distortions, the crazy ass sound, it just isn't doing it for me. Does this thing have its purpose out there? Not really. I mean, not really. Some people want to justify things like this by saying like, oh, I could use this when I go out to certain places that sell games and I could test them on the spot. And that could be a good reason to own something like this. But I just think, you know, there's got to be a better, a better solution to where doesn't feel like that's the reason why you're spending that's not the only reason you're spending your money on a device like this so yeah this thing was really freaking disappointing to me i had my hopes up because i just really liked the way it looked you know a little freaking famicom nintendo system handheld little diy look but it's not really diy i mean the buttons feel fine the d-pad feels fine everything about it feels fine it just looks and sounds like ass and performs like just a pile of crap, dude. And that's where it's at. I do not recommend this one. So, hey, guys. Do appreciate it. Happy you guys hanged out and watched all the way to the end. I know a few of you have. I know. So, thank you. Double thanks to those guys who got to this point. And with that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.